Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we have another guest, Shiyu, uh, to talk about her journey to software engineering. And Shiyu, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Shiyu. I'm currently a software engineer at Google and I work in the um, augmented reality kind of division at Google. I wasn't exactly looking for um, this field in particular. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I just really like building software and especially if the software is a little bit user facing like currently I mostly build like some sort of infrastructure mm -hmm. but that it's not infrastructure for developers mm -hmm. it's more like platform and services so people can integrate their feature on top of um, my platform mm -hmm. so so I still have to like work with product manager and you know UX designer I somehow ended up working on augmented reality it wasn't like I was looking for that but like mm -hmm. Before that, I was lo always looking for like opportunities that um, basically gives me like the chance to like work on like build like systems into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We know that from Waterloo, everyone goes through six internships, and your unique experience through the Waterloo's co-op experience got you into like Google today. Yeah. So, um, have you worked at Google as an intern and you converted to full time? Or how does your previous experience contribute to this current full-time role? I did not intern at Google. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, I decided to return to like a startup that I really like mm -hmm. after graduation. And just turns out this startup was already bought out by Google. Mm -hmm. So that's how I basically get into Google. And in terms of my previous experience and how they help, it's just I think if you have good internship and then you have good connection, you have um, like you know what you want to work on, and mm -hmm. then you can always like, kind of like go back to the same company for yeah. your full time job. Mm -hmm. So and it's like given that you have good reputation, then like people want you to go back. Mm -hmm. So I think at that time I was basically deciding between like two or three companies that are worth before and I just picked the one that I think I can learn the most from mm -hmm. yeah so like if you don't mind sharing like what like what kind of companies are you comparing against and like what contributed to the decision factors when you chose the startup that you're working on yeah I think for me I like to look at what's like a five-year ten-year career plan right mm -hmm. um, so when I graduate I had offer that's more like competitive in terms of like they like the total compensation is a lot bigger mm -hmm. and it's in San Francisco um, but I just feel like to me what's more important is building like my own skills around that time mm -hmm. like you know 10 years from now where do I want to be five years from now where do I want to be I think other jobs don't provide as good of like an opportunity as a startup because mm -hmm. it's just that it was a really like a group of like very talented people mm -hmm. and I feel like I can always learn things from them mm -hmm. so I know if I you know develop my career and actually build up skills mm -hmm. it's going to benefit me long term mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it's hard to go if I say if you know if I was a startup and it was a good startup um, it's not hard to go to a big company because mm -hmm. um, I've seen people do that, and like a lot of people from our startup actually went to like big companies. They all have good offer. Um, so I think you know, early in my career, I just want like opportunities to learn as much as I could. Like yeah. I was saying, like I like building systems from end to end, mm -hmm. and like sometimes you don't get that kind of opportunity in a big company mm. because um, the especially if you're working on a project that's already built, you're just adding features on top of them. I mean, not saying that's not good, but to me what's more exciting is to work on things that's brand new and you don't like what we're working on like it's just something that we don't have like in the market yet, right? Um mm -hmm. so I like exciting things and I wanted to be like constantly learning and growing. Mm -hmm. So ultimately I just think startup is just a great option because mm -hmm. I can wear multiple hats in mm -hmm. the startup. Um yeah. yeah. Interesting. So you ended up choosing a startup offer compared to like um, what you mentioned, like big packages, big packages, or like anything else, right? Yeah. Do you think like um, 
locations also matter because from what I know, like you mentioned that you were going to SF yeah. and um, now you're currently located in um, Canada, like um, Waterloo, Google. So like yeah. would um, location matter to you? I think location, I think ultimately if, if you're working at a company like Google, you can mm -hmm. always relocate whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, to me, I like really look like looking at things from a long, long term perspective. I don't care about if I'm making more money in these two years. I care about like what's happening with like you know within the next ten years, even twenty years in my life. Mm -hmm. So I think location. I think at that time when I graduate, there are two reasons that made me choose Canada over United States. One mm -hmm. is visa. I do not want to be put onto H one B visa. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't look deep into that, but I, I think if you have H-1B, you're very tied to your employer. That's true. Because you're sponsored uh, by see. your employer. Yeah. And then I don't want that. Because mm -hmm. um, it's really important to have the flexibility to jump onto opportunities yeah. whenever you want. Yeah. Especially like, in your career in general, right? Mm -hmm. But at that time, I just, I'm like, oh, it's going to be so much stress, like dealing with H-1B in mm -hmm. the United States. I feel so much stress if it's tied me down into one company that's not going to be good for me. That's true. Um, so that's actually one of the very big reasons. Mm -hmm. And the other reason was just like, I was in SF, I love the city, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, but I was sort of thinking that if, well now it's out of the picture, but back in the day I was thinking, if I were to start a family, mm -hmm. I would rather, like much rather be in Ontario mm -hmm. than California. Yeah. Because this place is more suitable for people who wanted to start family. That's true. I think. Um, and I think SF is just, it's more fun as a city in general. Mm -hmm. I think that's the second reason. And mm -hmm. the third reason is, I look at the compensation and everything. Yeah, you do get paid a lot more in the United States. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's like worth it to like, like the visa that I talk about. I think that's so much stress. I just don't want to deal with that. And another thing that I wanted to address today or ask you about is like, um, so you're an international student in Canada, right? Yeah. And I wanted to know why you chose Canada specifically for your education and why the program of uh, electrical and computer engineering at Waterloo. Yeah, so in terms of country, mm -hmm. I think I talked a little bit about like why I chose to stay in Canada after graduation. I think the first thing you think about is mm -hmm. whether you want to stay there or you want to go back, yeah. right? Like if your options just go back to like for me would be China, mm -hmm. um, then I wouldn't look at like what's the, like kind of like, you know, the immigration policy of that country. Mm -hmm. But if I actually wanted to like stay here and work, then that becomes important. So I know in Canada, like, after you graduate, you like, basically I got my PR really fast through mm -hmm. Google. Yeah. Um, but even if you don't have that, mm -hmm. if you did university in Canada, you get like a three year work permit mm -hmm. and you can just like stay in Canada. Even if you don't have a job, then you can just like look for a job. Mm -hmm. So those things are important because like life is hard enough. You don't want yeah. to be like dealing with all these immigration stuff while yeah. you're like working and all that. That's true. So when I was choosing school, I just decided that, you know, it's either United States or Canada. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I think I was confident that I can stay, mm -hmm. but still, I think Canada was like a more friendly place for, mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I started looking into schools in Canada. Um, and in terms of school, and then once I found this like view Waterloo, I was so like set on it. Mm -hmm. I had like no interest in anything else mm -hmm. um, because I don't. I know that I do not want to go into like grad school. Mm -hmm. I know I just like working. At that time, I really I was really into like startups and things. Yeah. So I'm like I have I see no reason for me to be in school. Um, that was kind of me at the beginning. So I'm like, oh, the school is great because they actually provide you with internship opportunities and mm -hmm. things. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I don't think any other school is doing this. So I have to go there. 
So, like, did you know that University of Waterloo was essentially the theater school for, like, U.S. companies and, like, the big tech companies before coming to Waterloo? Did you hear, like, examples on other people? So, I know that, like, I think I know it had a really good engineering program. Mm -hmm. I've heard good things about the co-op program. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that, like she said, I didn't know it was a feeder school for mm -hmm. all these big tech companies. I actually didn't know that. Because mm -hmm. I just naturally had a passion for whatever, like electrical and computer mm -hmm. engineering. Um, so I, I just like, I want like work experience. I wanted like to meet people who wanted to do like startup. That was kind of like main goal. I didn't mm -hmm. know. So you did not think about like University of Toronto or like any other schools in Canada either? Yeah, I applied to U of T. I uh -huh. think I got into every school I applied in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, it's either computer science or computer engineering. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, like there's no reason for me to be out of school. Like mm -hmm. I want work experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see, I see. Wow, okay. So um, I believe when we met, you were also in electrical engineering. Yeah. So, and you ended up switching to computer engineering, like, why did you make that switch? Yeah, so I think that's still kind of like related to the job, mm -hmm. because my first job was a software job. Yeah. Um, and then like the reason I chose electrical engineering was because I like math and physics, mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to go into like the theoretical field of it. I want, like, I'm always like a person that like hands-on things, mm -hmm. so I just picked something that I think I would enjoy in terms of like the like curriculum, mm -hmm. but also something I think that's more applicable, like a day-to-day -day thing, right? Um, so I just pick electrical, like EC, electrical and computer engineering, and just after like I think my first co-op, I'm just like, like what I care the most is if, like what kind of work I would do. Now it's software, then I just decided to switch to computer. Like I don't mm -hmm. think it matters. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think employers actually look at that, but I just mm -hmm. like, you know, if I have to learn, like, if I have to learn something in school, I might just mm -hmm. switch to computer, yeah. Yeah, so, like, just for our audience, at University of Waterloo, electrical and computer engineering is essentially the same class, and you don't have to declare a major, or, like, it's an easy switch later on if you want to, like, switch after second year. No, I think you have to switch before... It's second harder year. to switch after second because we split, but before uh -huh. that, it's just a switch. Okay. You just go to the office and you switch. I see, I see. Yeah. So like general first year and then like switch second year. Yeah. I see. And then since you did computer engineering, like uh, if you were to repeat school again, like would you choose computer engineering again or would yeah. you choose a different major? I think I would choose a different major. Oh. Just because, like I said, I care about the work mm -hmm. opportunity more, right? Yeah. I, like, computer engineering is a very rigid program. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of options. We, you, like, we didn't have, like, options until, like, third year. We are just learning this, this. It was yeah. really intense, a very yeah. packed program. Yeah. That leaves me not a lot of time to do other things I want. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, if I can choose again, maybe, like, I wouldn't go to software engineering, like I would just go to computer science mm -hmm. and then maybe choose to like, you know, maybe I would do a couple internship and as soon as I figure out, oh, like I wanted to do a full-time job, yeah. I can just, you know, finish school early and start doing a full-time job. I don't have to wait for five years. I like how out. everyone's saying that now that they know more, they're just like, I would have done a more flexible program. Yeah. I see. Yeah, it, it's the same thing for me, right? Like, our program was so rigid. Like, uh -huh. I didn't struggle in school. I think no, I had a great time in school. Like, yeah. Um, it was not because, oh, I think it's too much workload. It is uh -huh. not. I think it's just the time can be used more efficiently if I was in a different program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, okay. But it's hard to say that what I've been, like, what's the benefit that I got out of this program, right? Like, maybe mm -hmm. throughout the process, I learned to be more resilient, you know, like push through the hard work, do things that you don't even want to do. do. <laughs> yeah. So you can learn to be like that yeah. and be better at time management. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 